Nice. Chin up just a tiny bit, and then just eyes to camera. Good. When you're photographing someone in their space, you know, you've got this beautiful play between their real environment and how they behave therein. And beyond that, there's a little bit of a magic that happens because they're just comfortable. They're behaving as themselves. My job is quite the opposite. So I'm always on the road and always moving and going somewhere I've never been to make the most important portrait that's ever been created of that person, helping them establish their story. I haven't always been a photographer. I attended school, University of Pennsylvania, and thought I was possibly going to be a doctor. As soon as I took my first photography class, I fell in love with it and have been making images with a camera for about 16 years now. The first four years of photography at any level, I just shot environments and landscapes and spaces and places. Working in the woods really created this understanding and kind of balance to my work. One thing I think I realized pretty early was that uh, it was pretty rare that someone just photographing places was going to actually make a career out of it or make a business out of it. And um, I love photography so much that it's what I want to spend all of my time doing. So I really focused in on photographing people. Now I do a variety of types of work uh, and they all kind of play nice with each other. I find ways to get the most life, the most human connection out of the person and then also get the most power out of the space and then balance that through the pictures. My career has really been fueled by making work that I haven't been commissioned to create. A lot of it is telling a story in one single image. Creating a superhero out of a real person and making that power of that person connect to the viewer. Right now I'm working on a project called Women's Work. Focusing on women working in spaces that are dominated by men. This whole project started over a meeting uh, in New York at an ad agency and someone being a friend of a female butcher in Philadelphia. And that was the first shoot we did for this and it was phenomenal and loved that picture so much. We just shot Nancy. She's our pig farmer from Stryker Farms. I think it's gonna be a pretty inspiring project for a lot of people. When I'm creating work for myself, I get to be the creative director, I get to be the art director, and I get to be the post-production director. So I really have control of the project from start to end. I wanna be open, I wanna be transparent, and I wanna listen. I think great things are made with teams. Um, it's still my vision at the core, but um, to be great, it's gotta take more than one person. This project we're gonna work on today, I've visualized exactly how this picture is going to look like, but we're still waiting on some surprises. It really starts with this, you know, concept and then growth of the concept and working with my team and a lot of meeting, a lot of pre-production, and then it's all leading up to this one moment. So there is a bit of a response-based nature to work like this. I know it's going to be great. I know the framing. I know the, the moment I'm looking for, but we still want a little bit of surprise. So uh, anxious to see what that might be.
we could photograph you, put the camera in a particular spot, and run a bar across and attach the camera there, and then we could shoot everything with you, leave that there, and I can fire remotely while the pigs are coming up the way. Cool. It's, it's, you, think you, have to you know, that'll work. It's, it's still like trying to make the coolest picture we possibly can. Yeah. And uh, sometimes the, the reality of it is uh, you have to bend the rules a little bit. So, nice. all right. We'll get started on that. Yeah, let's part. build it. Yeah, good. When I graduated from school, I was very much at a place where it was sink or swim. So I had to make it work or I was going to end up moving home and probably the photography career would have died at that point. One of my first college photography professors felt that I should really be assisting. And it's like, I have no idea how to be an assistant. So, uh, okay, but I'm sure everyone's gonna wanna hire me as an assistant. But um, at the time, I was still training uh, as an athlete, a uh, javelin thrower on the track team at Penn. So if nothing else, I was probably one of the stronger assistants <laughs> available in Philadelphia. And that was, you know, that was honestly a valuable skill to a, to a photographer. So I started actually assisting for another commercial photographer in uh, Philadelphia. And, and I was able to jump into the business and see how money moved. And then from there, uh, really able to catapult myself. At this phase in my business, it's a pretty complex system. I have one full-time producer, and that's uh, Robert Lucin, who's been working with me six years now. When Robert started, he was fresh out of college and I saw a lot of similarities with how I was when I graduated to Robert. So I had a lot of confidence that over time he'd grow into someone really special and valuable to the business and valuable for my career. And he has, I mean, he's went from studio assistant to studio manager to uh, almost full-time producer. We've transitioned from being uh, kind of a more editorial response-based uh, on-location photographer to shooting a, a lot more advertising and then uh, creating pictures that are concept driven from start to finish. I've been very fortunate to always have business and always have volume and it puts us on the road and I think being on the road constantly is just kind of part of the story for me. A lot of times I think of myself as a nomadic photographer. You know, on average we're gone 100 to 120 days a year. It really has so much to do with the relationship that I have with whoever I'm working with and whatever we're trying to collaborate to create. I remember in college, one day in the mail, I got this Rolling Stone with Britney Spears on the cover this like amazing, powerful, captivating, complex, colorful, like in your face picture. And it was uh, from David LaChapelle. I remember getting that issue, thinking like, oh my God, this job must be amazing. Like creating a brand defying image of someone who's going to just about to probably be one of the biggest stars in the, in the world. For me, that was like one of the biggest influences in my career. For someone starting out, I think the most important piece of advice that I would give would be really focusing in on one type of work and developing a style and a vision. Create a really succinct body of work that is clear and represents you well and that you love and are so proud of. I was really interested in pictures that create an emotional response that feel like the experience and aren't held to this singular piece of time, 1 25th of a second or 1 60th of a second. You know, it's kind of beyond reality and a bit surreal. If you're working as a commercial photographer, the client loves your style and loves this body of work, but they're gonna have a lot of things that they need and a lot of things they don't need, and you have to be flexible. Some of the particular pillars of that body of work that you create, when you're branching out and doing something new, you're not gonna be worried about solving those original problems that you had when you were mastering uh, body of work A. You can kind of free yourself up to really 
focus on the connection, focus on the moment, and focus on that little piece of magic on a shoe that's going to finish the picture. That's good right there, perfect. And now looking past me right here. Good. How about that wind? What's happening right now? Yeah, it's great. All right, we're good. Thank you. So we're heading back from the shoot now. Everything was a success. We had a blast working with Nancy and Nolan and everybody at the Striker Farm. You know, today I had a real clear idea what that picture was gonna look like and the secondary picture as well. And then, you know, by being there and in the moment, we were able to have the option with Nancy holding the pig and really be in the space. And Nancy really was fantastic in front of the camera too and really striking and had a very charming, captivating look. So I am excited to get back, get to the studio and uh, get everything downloaded and see it a little bigger on the screen and get working towards a final image. A lot of my work is most everything in focus from, you know, close to hero to background and far background, like everything matters. And then uh, lighting to, you know, pop the face and seeing lights on darks and lights on darks, it really creates a natural target. Establishing that connection that I want the viewer to have with my pictures. I was my own retoucher for the first three, four, five years. And then that gave me that basis to work on developing my own style. And then we hit a point with business that it just didn't make sense that I was handling all the post. Any job that I would love to do, I really try and make it happen somehow. And doing that, uh, I can't wear every hat. I've been fortunate to work with some really talented people to kind of help refine and then redefine that work in itself. Most of that's handled with one specific individual, and that's George McArdle. And we've been working together for, I wanna say about nine months now. I think the first three months, it's really feeling out how I like the pictures to look. A heavy hand versus a soft hand, more of it is a soft hand in most cases. But now it's at a point where I'm on the road, we have back to back to back projects. I feel confident that George's hand is really spelling my vision. We have these amazing tools, and it's funny when people are worried about overusing them. You know, I wanna capture as much as I possibly can, but if what I wanna convey with a picture takes multiple frames, I don't have a problem with it. I'll use whatever tool, whatever technology that that takes. I'm trying to do things that are pushing the boundaries of what I'm accustomed to, and that's paying off in a really fantastic way. Recently, we've been doing a lot of moving stills. You know, everything moving in one world. I think my brain never really shuts off. Um, I'm always intaking everything that's around me. Right now, we're in this point of when I'm not on the road, really giving as much attention to my children as possible and being really engaged with them. And I've had a lot of nice inspiration just watching and experiencing with them. You know, the idea of like the first time you see a giraffe, what a crazy alien creature that might be. The boundaries for children are kind of unlimited and it's nice to tap into that perspective. I'm looking back like 10 years ago and feeling like, wow, I've come a really long way, but there's still pictures that helped launch my career that I hold very near and dear. I'm just a lot more fluent with, uh, with using those skills and using those tools. Above it all, I just, I feel really grateful to have had this career and had these opportunities to explore and get to see our nation. I've actually shot in every state in America. 
if you've got enough of a feel and a love for shooting like I do, you can really make a special picture anywhere.